Peace be with you. People of God, welcome home to the First Congregational Church of Rockport on this beautiful Sunday that we celebrate Mother Earth. Thursday was Earth Day, and I hope you had a chance to get outside and do something, or from inside, wherever you were, to enjoy the beauty of the created earth that God has blessed us with. Friends, no matter who you are, no matter where you find yourself on your walk of life, your faith journey, we welcome you home to the First Congregational Church of Rockport, Old Sloop. Whether this is your first visit or you've been attending this church for a lifetime, our doors and our arms and our live streaming and our hearts are always open to welcome you home again and again and again. And if we haven't seen you in a little while, welcome home. We're so glad you're spending this time with us. Here in this congregation, we acknowledge that we gather here on the traditional lands and waters of the Pawtucket and other Algonquin-speaking peoples, past and present. We honor with gratitude these lands and the waters which surround us, as well as the people who had stewarded them for thousands of years and continue to steward them now. This service today, as I mentioned, is about Earth. And what a beautiful way to start off with that amazing rendition of a Native American chant done by our 12 School Street singers today, Gia and Maddie and Bella and Taylor and Celeste. Thank you, all of you, for welcoming us in to this celebration of Earth. And now I would like to invite Ruth Janet Taylor to lead us in today's prayer of invocation. Heavenly gardener, as this is transformed into energy by plants, let your shining light upon us transform us. Let words sown in our hearts blossom into amazing acts of love and service for all creation. Open us to your presence and fill us with your spirit that we may reflect your love for all people. Let others experience your warmth and love through us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing. Praise for the morning. Praise for them springing fresh from the wood. Strong. 
Friends in Christ, another amazingly beautiful piece of music from our virtual chancel choir and the Hearst family. And I thank all of you. This is our time during worship where we lift up the announcements that we need to share with you so you know what's going on here in our congregation and what we're offering. As always, we offer a number of things that you can do during the week. On Wednesday, we have story time at 3 o'clock, which is great fun um, and a great time to be with people and learn about each other and learn how our faith is grown through all of our experiences, the stories of our lives. At 5 o'clock on Wednesdays, we have Lectio Divina Bible study, which is prayer and meditation with Scripture, beautifully done by those people who join us and such an amazing connection. And if you've never done it, I invite you to join us. You don't have to have done Bible study any time before or come on a regular basis. We work with a small piece of scripture each week. On Wednesdays at 7.30 is youth group. And even though it's youth group, anybody is invited. There's the book club Thursday mornings. And Friday afternoons at four o'clock, we gather in prayer to lift up those people and those issues that we feel we need to pray about and we pray together, as well as celebrate the joys and prayers that are answered. And then, of course, on Sunday morning, as we are here, we have our live streaming worship through Zoom, Facebook, and YouTube. And during the week, if you miss this or you want to hear the music again or any part of the worship service, we are on local cable access channel 67 at 4 o'clock in the afternoons. And speaking of joys, I want to lift up to you a joy of one of our church members, one with a beautiful voice, who along with her whole family gives so much to this congregation. And I want to share the joy that Rhiannon Hurst has been recognized and given two different awards recently. One, the National Young Arts Foundation Award in Jazz Voice. And we have been blessed over the years to hear Rihanna and sing in this sanctuary and this year throughout Zoom with her brothers, her brother and sister, and with her parents, and sometimes by herself, accompanied by a guitarist or piano. What a gift. And she was also awarded Excellent in Music Award from the Massachusetts Music Educators Association. What wonderful ways for people to recognize the gift that she brings. And we are so thrilled for her and for our whole community. One other thing I would invite you, as I did last week, if anybody would like to get involved with our worship team and has or a desire to or the ability to do slideshows such as you see during some of the um, pieces of music we really could use that help and if anybody out there would like to join me on a small team looking at how we prepare for that day that we reopen our sanctuary and can start to have in-person worship along with our live streaming, because that will continue forever. But if you have a desire to do that, I would appreciate the help, and it's a way for us to get ready so when that time comes, we'll be able to do that seamlessly. I'd like now to pass it on to Jay Reed for this week's Mission Moment. Good morning. Thank you for your Easter offering. Your offering will help Family Promise pay the September homeless families at 8 Rantoul Street, Beverly. Family Promise rented the building in response to the pandemic. Rotating guests between churches was no longer safe. 
Families are upstairs. The family promise office is in the basement. There's a small yard in back. They will occupy the building at least until the end of the year. Family Promise does not intend to rotate families between churches again. Their plan is to obtain property for, to house guests and staff. Volunteers would use the Family Promise building thereafter. Lots of families are at risk for becoming homeless and they call on Family Promise. Lots of families recently homeless call on Family Promise. And so, in addition to working with homeless families on site, as they are now, Family Promise is also providing homelessness prevention and remediation. I will miss hosting families here with all of you, our many and sometimes small volunteers who always knew just what to do to make our guests feel at home in a strange place. I will miss the warm feeling of community that came from using our site to reach out with volunteers from First Congregational Church, Unitarian United Methodist Church, First Baptist Church of Rockport, Anasquam Village Church, and St. Paul Lutheran Church. I hope they and First Congregational Church will retain a semblance of team when the next phase of family promise begins. I hope all our volunteers will feel quite good that they successfully know our many families, some with infants from 2013 until now, hosting not just here at the church, but at Cape Ann Motor Inn and at the B&B in Ipswich early on. And not just hosting, but cooking and cleaning and preparing and doing dishes and shopping and sharing sheets and blankets and your kids' old clothing and bringing your kids to play with their kids and keeping watch over sleeping guests in the night and waiting up for the late arriving ones and setting up and breaking down guest spaces and setting the thermostats for them and snow shoveling a space for them on the sidewalk in front of the church and trying to find some place to park near the church and removing trash from and cleaning the kitchen and anywhere else and taking the sheets and blankets to be washed and bringing them back and putting them away and making sure the building was locked when you left at 7 a.m. Thanks also to Matt and Zavino at Rockport Inn and Suites for washing blankets and sheets. Friends in Christ, it is always a joy for me to wish you Shanti, Salam, Shalom, the peace of Christ be with you this day and every day. And may you be so moved and challenged this week to greet everybody you meet with Christ, the peace be with you. Amen.
Today's reading is from Genesis 1, 24 to 31, the message, day five. God spoke, earth generate every sort and kind, cattle and reptiles and wild animals, all kinds. And there it was, wild animals of every kind, cattle of all kinds, every sort of reptile and bug. God saw that it was good. God spoke. Let us make human beings in our image. Make reflecting our nature so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cat, and yes, earth itself, and every animal that moves on the face of the earth. God created human beings created them godlike, reflecting God's nature. God created them and female. God blessed them, prosper, reproduce, fill the earth, take charge, be responsible for fish in the sea and birds in the air for every living thing that we earth. Then God said, I've given you every sort of seed-bearing plant on earth and every kind of fruit-bearing tree, given them to you for food, to all animals and all birds, everything that moves and breathes. I gave whatever grows out of the ground for food, and there it was. God looked over everything he had made, it was good, so very good. It was evening, it was morning, day six. People of God, would you join me in prayer? Gracious and holy God, this morning, I ask you to move the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts by your love. And help me not to be the instrument of my own or anyone else's oppression this day and every day going forward, but to be an ambassador for peace. Friends, as I mentioned earlier and as the music has showed you, we are celebrating the earth and all that it gives us. And we are part of that. When the youth were singing, it was so beautiful. How they pulled everybody in to the earth and ourselves. 
Earth Day. I remember in Vermont, Earth Day, and maybe before Earth Day, Green Up Day. But I remember always, as a youth, going out and working somewhere, whether it was a local park or whether it was along the roadsides, whether it was to listen to people talking about this new thing called recycling. This was back in the late 60s, early 70s, mind you, um, long before I was born. But it has been a day for me personally to remember, to reconnect. I want to share with you a story. Many years ago, in a museum, there was this amazing exhibit. It was a globe, small, about two feet in diameter. And it was held in the exhibit in this glass sphere. And it was so amazing and mysterious that people came from all over the world to see it. Sometimes the lines outside the museum were so long they winded through the whole city. But people waited. And then when they got there and could stand around the exhibit and see this globe, they saw that no matter where they stood, there was always a different view. They saw different things. They saw on this globe that there were bodies of water. And from those bodies of water came streams and rivers of water filling these bodies of water. Some of them were small. Some of them were large and covered a vast part of the globe. Sometimes they were flat and serene. And other times they seemed to be turned up with white peaks on the waves. And then there was also bumps on the globe. Some of them were very, very pointy with white on the top of them and others were less pointy but still bumpy, covered with vegetation and then some were flat with beautiful lush green and then some with sand and the wind that blew around the globe would make beautiful designs in the sand. And people were awed by this. What really excited them also were the little creatures that lived on this globe. And it became so amazing. And the word got out around the world that people decided to make it an international treasure. It became the one, number one wonder of all the world, this beautiful globe. And they came up with ways to protect it. And they would give their lives to protect it. Because with this globe, they believed that if they were able to touch it, be near it, they would be healed. And they also thought that just to gaze at this globe would give them wisdom. It was an amazing gift to all the world. But as things happened, as time went on, those who protected it, those who cared for it, those who came to see it got involved in other things, things that took their minds elsewhere. The fact that they could come to this globe and feel healing and wisdom just kind of faded away. One of the things I forgot to mention was around this globe was these gases. Sometimes you could see through them, but after a while, as people stopped coming as much. Those that came started to notice holes in this gas layer around the globe. At first they were small and then they got bigger. 
And they noticed that in where these places took, where these holes were, that the globe started to die in places. The water would dry up, the bumpy parts would shrivel. Eventually, The globe slowly stopped breathing. And eventually it just slipped away. Unregarded, unloved, out into the vast cosmos. These days, it's a part of history. It's a small note in books. And every once in a while, when you read about this globe, you can see the tears on the page that you're reading. Such beauty, such mystery. It gave so much to the whole world. Healing, wisdom, and awe. But the world let it slip through its fingers. This is an old story. It's a story I heard many years ago when I was still in school. That would be grade school. It's a story that resonates with me today in this moment. I pray that if you haven't had a chance recently, to go outside, to feel your feet connected with the earth, to listen to the birds, to hear the ocean, to feel the grass and the trees, to watch the new buds popping, to listen to other people like yourselves enjoying creation, that you have the opportunity today Remember what it's like. Over the last year, the earth itself has been blessed with a chance to breathe again. Because so many people worldwide, because of the pandemic, we're staying home. We're not driving. Many industries had to slow down. The earth was able to breathe. Smog lifted from cities that hadn't seen a day without smog in longer than anybody could remember. Rivers and oceans and lakes became clearer. The earth was able to breathe. We are called by God, as we heard in today's scripture, to take care of the earth, to take care of creation. We are called by God to honor all the resources that the Creator God placed on earth, including us, to care for all and everything. That is the balance of creation. We need to do a much better job. We need to get more involved. Before this planet that we live on slips away through our fingers. This is what we are called to do. This is what God created humanity for. to care for creation. I know I need to do more. I'm sure we all need to do more. This week I challenge you to try to do one more thing, whether it's turning the lights off when you really don't need them, when it's not driving as far as you thought you needed to go. whether it's to recycle, whether it's 
to plant trees and plants and flowers. For as we breathe, we breathe in the breath of God which comes through the trees. Let us be so moved and remember that globe, the healing touch it can bring and the wisdom we gain from it. Amen. People of God, today for the prayers of the people, I've asked Katie Welch to join me in reading a litany 
It comes from the UN, United Nations Environmental Sabbath Service from Earth Day 1990. I did send it to you, so if you want to read along with it, mute it, but with joy, I invite you to do that. Join us now for this litany for the earth. Katie? To bring new life to the land, to restore the waters, to refresh the air. We join with the earth and with each other. To renew the forests, to care for the plants, to protect the creatures. We join with earth and with each other. To celebrate the seas, to rejoice in the sunlight, to sing the song of the stars. We join with the earth and with each other. To recall our destiny, to renew our spirits, to reinvigorate our bodies. We join with the earth and with each other. To recreate the human community, to promote justice and peace, to remember our children. We join with the earth and with each other. We join together as many and diverse expressions of one loving mystery for the healing of the earth and the renewal of all life. Thank you. I would also like to read you today an Earth Day prayer that was written by our youth group who went on their mission trip in 2015, so a few years back. But I love this prayer. It is beautiful. Listen now to these beautiful words written by our youth, our Earth Day prayer. Lord, we thank you for your gifts of the earth, its gifts of smell, roses, the salty ocean spray, freshly raked soil, the unique scent that comes after rain, even the smell of a wet dog, its gifts of sights, the first green of the new spring growth, a bright sunrise, and the colors of a sunset, rainbows and the aurora borealis, and watching fuzzy creatures go about their daily work. It's gifts of touch, the softness of a delicate flower petal, cold snowflakes on our faces, rolling in the grass that tickles, the roughness of a tree's bark, warm sand between our toes, and the sudden shock of cold when a foot steps into the ocean. Lord, we, great, we are greatly concerned by melting ice caps, the ever-increasing pollution, and all the man-made damage to our planet. And we ask for your help in guiding humankind to find another way, a way to live that respects your created world. We ask your help to keep mindful and savor the sacred things, clean air, the stillness of the woods, the vastness of your ocean, the distance and permanence of the stars, the laughter of a baby, and the life-growing sun. Lastly, we are grateful for the magnificence of your storms, the way they give and take away remind us of you. The thunder and lightning reminds us of your power, your power that created all we know and love. Amen. What a beautiful prayer written by an amazing group of people. People of God, this is a time when we recite the Lord's Prayer together. And today I am going to offer you something a little different. It will be the Lord's Prayer, and it'll show up on your screen here in a minute. It is the Lord's Prayer in the original Aramaic language translated into modern English. It's on your screen, and I invite you now to read with me. As we are bold to say, Father, Mother of the cosmos, shimmering light of all, focus your light within us as we breathe your holy breath. 
enter the sanctuary of our hearts, uniting within us the sacred rays of your power and beauty. Let our hearts' desires unite heaven and earth through our sacred union, on earth as it is in heaven. Help us fulfill what lies within the circle of our lives today. Forgive our secret fears as we freely choose to forgive the secret fears of others. Let us not enter forgetfulness, tempted by false appearances. For from your astonishing fire comes the eternal song which sanctifies all, renewed internally in our lives and throughout all creation. We seal these words in our hearts, committed in trust and faith. Amen. People of God, this is our time during our worship service where we bless the offerings that so many give to this congregation, this church, in support of all the ministries of this church. There are many ways to give. You can give of your gifts, your skills. You can give of yourself in prayer. You can give your time in many ways. And you can give finances. We need all those to continue to do all the different ministries that God has called us to do here in this church in Rockport, throughout Cape Ann, and throughout the created world. I invite you now to raise your hands to your cell phones, your iPads, or your computer screens, as together we bless these gifts. Holy and gracious God, we continue to give of ourselves and we ask you to bless us in our giving, in all the ways we give. Today, we ask you to bless these gifts and to use them wherever the need is greatest throughout your created world. Especially today, we are thinking of earth and all the ways that the work we do together and individually, can help maintain the balance of your created world and protect Earth and keep it that beautiful part of creation that we love so dearly. Amen.
faithful friends in Christ, I thank you for joining us today for this joyous celebration of Mother Earth and all that she means to us. As you go into the week, may you be blessed over and over again by the beauty of Earth all around us, no matter where you are no matter what the weather is like, no matter whether it's snowing or raining or hot and sunny, may you be blessed to remember that earth gives us so much, so much life and a way to continue. May you be moved to take care of her better than you have before better than we have collectively before. And may you give God thanks for the blessing of the earth. Amen. Good morning. Uh, before the postlude, uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, a, a lot of the people who have put so much work in this week and every week into all of the music. The service was just full of music, uh, as you just witnessed. Um, so let me just go through a bit. If you don't, these people need to be acknowledged. Um, I feel, uh, starting with the prelude, you saw that um, uh, beautiful film accompanying the uh, organ that was done by Christina Martin this week, all the editing of that, followed by the youth choir, which was also, <clears throat> every week Christina picks out a piece, goes to the individual people, records, teaches it to them, records it, then provides a graphic accompaniment, uh, uh, visuals with it, and edits it every week and this week was quite extraordinary uh, so thank you to her and all of our young singers who show up every week this morning there were two anthems uh, morning is broken we did about a year ago that was bella singing the first verse and then the entire hearst family following her um, the second anthem was just recorded this week. Um, you might notice some new faces in there, and I just want to mention this. Evelyn um, has uh, brought along two of her friends, Rennie and April. April's just joined us. She's in Falmouth. It's quite um, poignant. Uh, they sang together a number of years ago in the Tango, all three of them in the Tanglewood Festival Choir, which is the choir with the Boston Symphony. And so this is a reunion of sorts of these three gifted altos, that, and you can hear the strength of that in, in the choir. So welcome, Rini and April, and thank you, Evelyn, for bringing your friends. Uh, bring some more. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> and also that the quartet in, in the Beauty of the Earth was Bridget and then Christina, who's also, I should mention, was playing recorder in the uh, uh, youth piece, and John and Fred. So thank you to all of them and to the whole choir who shows up every week and brings us a hymn. Uh, also, Julian Osman. Thank you, Julian. She's an alumni of our youth choir who gave us that lovely rendition of In the Bulb, There is a Flower. And then our other Julian, Julian Hurst, thank you for singing that, that beautiful text by Jan Struther. I had written as a choral work, which is a little tricky to put together on lines, so we did an arrangement for solo. Uh, solo voice. Thank you, Julian. Um, and finally, to uh, again, just to reiterate, Jeff, who puts all of this together, including the choir, which is an enormous amount of work, and, and he has uh, 
very able assistant, Jim Schell. So thanks to both of you gentlemen for all of the work you do every week. And we'll end the service with um, <clears throat> something also contributed last summer, Stephanie Stathos, um, who is principal flute in the Cape Ann Symphony, and her and uh, Stephen Smith, who's a cellist, often play at Easter and Christmas service. And Stephanie put together um, uh, some of her photos, favorite nature photos she'd taken, and she'll be performing a movement of the Bach G minor um, sonata for flute, um, accompanied by her mother, Margaret. So this was made last summer. It seemed like a fitting uh, postlude for this Earth Day. So thank you again to all of the people who make these services possible. Thank you.